you remember the last line? I've never done the thing I wanted to in all my life. Quite a That's the man who never followed his bliss. Well, I heard that line. I was living in Brownsville when I was teaching at Sarah Lawrence. Before I was married, I used to be eating out in the restaurants of the town for my lunch and dinners. And Thursday night was the maid's night off in Brownsville, so that all the families were out in the restaurants. And one fine evening, I was in my favorite restaurant there, it was a Greek restaurant, and uh, at the table was sitting a father, a mother, and a scrawny little boy, about 12 years old. The father says to the boy, drink your, orange, uh, your, drink your tomato juice. Uh, and the boy says, I don't want to. And uh, the father, with a louder voice, says, drink your tomato juice. And the mother says, don't make him do what he doesn't want to do. The father looks at her and she says, he can't go through life doing what he wants to do. <laughs> Said, if he does only what he wants to do, he'll be dead. Look at me. I've never done the thing I wanted to in all my life. I said, my God, Babbitt incarnate. Mm. And that's the man who never followed his bliss. Well, you may have a success in life, but then just think of it. What kind of life was it? What good is it? You've never done the thing you wanted to in all your life. What happens when you follow your bliss? You come to bliss. How would you advise somebody to tap that spring of eternal life, that joy that is right there? Well, we're having experiences all the time, which uh, uh, may, on occasion, render some sense of this, a little intuition of where your joy is. Grab it. No one can tell you what it's going to be. I mean, you've got to learn to recognize your own depths. Do you ever have this sense when you're following your bliss, as I have at moments, of being helped by hidden hands? All the time. It, it, it's miraculous. I even have a superstition that has grown on me as the result of invisible hands coming all the time. Namely, that if you do follow your bliss, you put yourself on a kind of track that has been there all the while waiting for you. And, uh, and the life that you ought to be living is the one you're living somehow. And uh, when you can see it, uh, you, you begin to deal with people who are in the field of your bliss. And they open w doors to you. I say, follow your bliss and don't be afraid. And doors will open where you didn't know they were going to be. Do you ever have sympathy for the man who has no invisible means of support? Yes, he's the one that evokes compassion, you know, the poor chap. And, and to see him stumbling around when uh, the water of immortal life is right there is, uh, is uh, really, it evokes one's pity. Right there? Hmm? Right there? You yes. believe that? Yes. The waters of eternal life? Right there. Where? Wherever you are. If you're following your bliss. I mean, you're, you're having that joy, that, that uh, refreshment, that life all the time.